everybody it's nicole um so i went ahead and i unmolded uh what i had hoped would be um semi-soft or soft or some form of uh what i did in my previous video so if uh for those of you who are checking out this video and you don't know what i'm talking about you can uh check uh, take a look at uh, it's the Let's Craft uh, New Resin Experiment. Uh, that's the first portion of uh, this particular project that I'm working on that I wanted to try out. Um, so if you want to see what I did first, um, this is the second step. I, and um, wanted to see like this technique that I wanted to try and i would have, i know that a couple of you had were hoping that this would be alive but unfortunately due to the length of time that it takes for two part epoxy resin to cure I can't, unfortunately i can't do it as a live it has to be a pre-recorded video um so um so what i did in my previous video just to kind of give you a recap was I uh, poured or I put um, some chameleon powders along with the help of my son uh, into some snowflake molds and into a uh, dragon mold. And I just filled the dragon mold, uh, not all the way full. Um, and then um, the snowflakes, I wanted to see if I could catch it at the right time so that it was soft enough for me to mold with my hands and whatnot. So I pulled the, uh, so I molded, unmolded the uh, snowflakes and the dragon. Uh, and I will show you in a minute what it looks like unmolded. And I wanted to see if I would be able to get it to shape in some way. Um, and then obviously there was a little bit of overspill. Uh, well, not a little, more like a lot. Uh, but when I unmolded it, I'm like, well, do I want to take the overspill off? Do I not? Um, and ultimately what I decided was I actually don't because I kind of like the way it looks. And then I needed to find a mold that I could either pour in to the right, right way or the wrong way. So like, uh, to use it uh, for its intended purpose or, you know, like pour resin into it uh, while putting those particular resin pieces inside of it so that it will then be reversed from what its intended per mold would be. So I decided, I landed on, initially what I was going to use was the dragon egg mold, but uh, that would have been too hard because I would need sticks or toothpicks or something to hold up the uh, dragon piece along the snowflake pieces in the mold and catch it in time to yank out the toothpicks or popsicle sticks or whatever that's holding up the other resin pieces. And that would not make sense just because um, the resin actually was because I checked periodically throughout the day and uh, it was either too soft, um, like way, way too soft, uh, still too soft. And then, of course, by the time I went to bed, it still uh, wasn't cured enough. And then by the time I woke up this morning, um, it's kind of in this like middle spot where it's it's cured, but not cured all the way. And so, but I, so anyway, it it's kind of like at this point where I can't really mash it into what I want to, but we're gonna work with that. So I was like, okay, what other molds do I have that I can use uh, to put these pieces in to make this experiment kind of work and then you know, I can eventually perfect it each time as I go along. 
uh, along with learning with my environment how to use my resin and everything because I told you in my last video that I'm gonna have to relearn kind of how the resin cures in this weather and then of course when it gets warm again how it works in that weather as well so I found a sakura or cherry blossom mold this mold here I'm like well can I use it? And I'm like, well, I can use it with just the snowflakes, uh, but not with the dragon mold because the wall is not quite high enough for me because I would have to fill it like way over the top and hope to God nobody bumps into the table. And I'm like, yeah, I don't necessarily want to do that. And so I ended up uh, finding my ashtray molds and I'm, what I'm going to do is I'll show you. Um, so I'll show you the mold. So this is the molds and so this is normally the way I would pour the resin in and I will be pouring it this way. So this is like the wrong way. So I'm going to be putting uh, the resin in the resin pieces in here in this like bowl area and I'm going to be putting them face down and then I'm going to take the clear resin and I am going to um, uh, pour that on top. And so I'm hoping that the dragon mold, uh, the dragon piece will not end up sticking out, but we'll see. Again, this is an experiment. This is a work in progress. It might work, it might not. Um, it might be where I need to use another mold and uh, pour it on top or just when I unmold it, see what it looks like and decide, yes, we're good to go or no, and just toss the whole thing in the garbage. This is a work in progress and you guys are kind of coming along for the ride. Uh, so if uh, those of you who don't know me, I'm Nicole. If you aren't subscribed to me, um, I would appreciate it. If you hit the subscribe button, hit the no notification button so you know when I upload my next video and then uh, give this video a thumbs up and comment below if you like it or not. Uh, and then I do have a giveaway going on. Uh, it's a couple of videos back. Uh, it's a vlog video. I think it's by now it's like maybe two or three videos back. And um, it's the giveaway is for three skeins of yarn and uh, you have to watch the whole video in order to enter as there is a uh, secret word in uh, that video that is at the end of it in order to enter um, and the video isn't that long um, and so uh, I don't know I my headspace right now is kind of in a weird spot I've been going through and dealing with a lot uh, which is neither here nor there uh, and so as of late I've been kind of been in this headspace where um, I'm coming on here to kind of clear my head, either talk to you guys or whoever's, you know, willing to check out my videos, but mainly just to, uh, just to talk and not necessarily to be like, uh, to achieve particular goals. I would love to hit 1100, but at this point I feel like I've sort of plateaued and I kind of like, hmm. Uh, I think this is more therapy for me than it necessarily is for you guys. Um, but I'm having you guys come along with me on this particular experiment, uh, just for the fun of it. And then of course I still do plan on having lives and doing the resin lives and all that stuff. Um, uh, but, uh, my end game is basically, uh, has turned into more of I'm here because I want to be here uh, for everybody along with the fact that I want to be here um, so yeah I I because I, I really seriously question on whether or not I wanted to just uh, shut the whole entire channel down um, or not because I was like what for what am i doing this for i don't know um because i felt like i wasn't getting anywhere but 
Um, anyhow, like I said, things are neither here nor there. I, um, we're going to move on. Okay, so I unmolded the dragon pieces. Um, so this is the dragon out of the mold. Um, so that, if you can tell in the light, is the chameleon powder. And uh, that's the black that exploded on me in the last video. And then uh, this is the blue. I believe it's the blue. And then uh, my son helped me in my last video. He is still sleeping. Um, and then uh, there's this one. So this is like, you know, like a purpley pink color. And then there's this one. Um, and a little bit of the powder does really go a long way. So, um, there's that. Okay, so you can see that there's the overspill. And I think the overspill will actually help me when I put them in uh, the mold. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to, so uh, I will show you. So you can see how the resin piece Kind of bends and I'm thinking that when I place uh, the resin pieces in the molds um, it might help with placement but I'm like well if I do it this way then it's gonna be sitting you know um, on this you know bowl portion so I'm still like deciding before I actually show you guys. So don't be surprised if I decide maybe the Sakura one works better. Um, that it might end up that this piece may sink to the bottom and may show through. Um, so I don't know. Um, we'll see what I decide when I turn the camera on. So what I'm going to do is I am going to make my last decision on if I'm going to do this one or if I'm going to do this one. And then the big decider is how this plays into everything. If I'm going to end up using it or not using it, if I decide not to use it, it's not the end of the world because I think um, the experiment you know, will help uh, me get me to figure out uh what works and doesn't work as far as you know curing times and everything to achieve the look that i want to achieve um but uh so the pieces are bendy but as you can see it's bouncing back but i know that if i leave it sit for another couple of days it'll end up probably hardening up so um i'm going to decide one what my uh, mold is going to be and two i'm going to um, pour more of the two-part epoxy resin and then uh, throw on the gloves and then i'll start it up and uh, we'll go from there so i'll see you on the other side okay everyone um so i am putting on my gloves and i uh poured out part A and part B to equal out a total of um, what will be uh, two ounces of uh, resin. I'm thinking that will be more than enough uh, resin to uh, fill uh, what I need for uh, the mold. So. As you can see, I put the snowflakes, the three snowflakes, because if I put any more snowflakes, I think it'll be way too crowded. Uh, but I put the snowflakes and the dragon uh, upside down. So uh, everything is uh, facing the other way. So I think it actually might end up having this really cool effect, uh, you know, with the concave um look uh of the ashtray because that's what i went with so the top will be 
flat, I'm hoping. And then uh, the top will be, uh, you know, this, uh, you know, I guess like bowl or whatever you want to call it. And so I've got my gloves on, uh, on the top. So uh, this is the resin and I haven't added any color to it, no glitter, no nothing. It's just gonna be completely clear. Um, initially, I think I poured, poured too much. So I put, I, th I ended up putting a little bit of it. Um, so I poured out too much of the part A into my uh, cup. So I ended up uh, putting that into a Ziploc baggie and I so that none of the uh, resin got into the garbage and you know zipped it closed and put it in the garbage and then I poured out um, a new amount so one ounce of uh, part A and one ounce of part B so that I will end up with two ounces total of resin I think will be more than enough like I said so like I said I've got uh, the snowflake pieces here and uh, the dragon and they are uh, upside down so that all that will be seen is uh, the chameleon powder portion of the pieces um, and I'll show you what the other pieces look like um, so this is the dragon that I poured just to use up what I had left of the resin. So this is the black resin without the, uh, chameleon powders. And then, um, this is the snowflake without the chameleon powder. So, um, I'll kind of give you a comparison. You can see the difference. You can see the in color. So that's that. And like I told you in uh, at the beginning, the pieces were kind of at this like in between, um, like this like uh, in between curing where it was soft but not hard so getting a popsicle stick and i am going to um mix the resin and we are going to go ahead and pour it in and i'll do my best to keep my hands out of the way so you can see as i pour uh the resin in uh, the mold and I've never used a mold the wrong way out either and so see um, I'm starting here it's easier for me to do it this way off the camera so I can see when it is done being stirred It's funny, so today is Tuesday. There is no school again, because school was canceled on Friday due to inclement weather. Uh, Cause you know, we, there, where I live, there's still areas where, uh, you know, that are out of town. The buses, the school buses can't necessarily get easily to. And so, the, and I'm sure, I don't know if any of you uh, deal with this, but uh, they have problems with staffing bus drivers because they don't pay very well, which is really unfortunate because I'm sure, sure being a bus driver is really hard because uh, they had that problem when I was in Hawaii as well. Uh, hiring and keeping bus drivers uh, was really hard uh, for the Department of Education because it doesn't pay well. They really should pay better because, you know, doing all that driving Plus dealing with unruly kids in the back. I mean, I have a hard t had a hard time when my kids were younger, you know, driving 
around with them in the car. I can't imagine like, you know, possibly 50 kids in the back of, you know, a huge, huge car, uh, if you want to, or minivan, if you want to call it that. And then, you know, having to cart them everywhere uh, and drop them off, pick them up and all that stuff. So, but anyway, uh, they canceled school today because of inclement weather, um, because the roads are slippery and there's still snow on the ground and yeah so uh so my youngest does not have school again today i don't know if they're gonna have school tomorrow and in all you know honestly i don't i don't know how uh how often oklahoma does the school shutdown or canceling due you know having snow days and what will cause them to decide you know they need to do like virtual classes uh because you know the doe's standard of having to have so many days in the classroom or so many days of you know education time or whatever you want to call it so um so that's that's the only thing that I'm concerned about, that if he misses too much time, that it may be where uh, the school year gets extended by so many days. Because uh, I'm thinking, well, if they don't have school tomorrow, then what's the point in having school in the rest of the week, you know, Thursday and Friday, you know, because uh, they're, so they have, they go to school from 8.20 to 3.20, Monday through Thursday, and then Friday is 8.20 to 2.30. And so I don't know uh, what it will, how it will impact the kids uh, later in the school year if the weather continues and they continue to uh, cancel school. because. Uh, from what I understand, this kind of weather isn't necessarily normal for Oklahoma to get uh, such cold weather and uh, this much snow uh, at all. So, I mean, it is what it is. Um, just and the thing is, after you know, living in Minnesota for eleven years, and I lived in Iowa for uh, three, three and a half years, something like that uh and they there would be have to be a massive massive snowstorm for them to call a snow day cuz when i lived in minnesota i would still have to go to work if we got like 5 or 6 inches of snow and you know it was negative 30 outside you just go out and start the car, um, you know, 15 minutes or 10 minutes before you leave and, you know, scrape the windows uh, and sweep the windows off the snow and, you know, snow off of your car. And then uh, you just bundle up and you go, you just leave earlier so that you can get to work on time and get the, you know, kids to school on time and all of that stuff. So um, I'm just, Right now, I'm just waiting here to see if I've mixed it enough because there's a bit more bubbles than I'm used to. And see, this is the thing that, you know, this is, like I said, this is going to be a learning curve because uh, this, this is the resin that I like. This is um, Padua resin. And... Um, The bubbling is something new. So I don't know if this has to do with the barometric pressure, if it has to do with the weather and anything like that as to why it's acting the way it is. It won't make me change the resin. It just means I have to change the way I do things. Um, Cause I think I pretty much 
have it mixed well enough together. So I'll show you what it looks like. So right now, this is what it looks like. So the reason why it looks so cloudy is because all of that is bubbles. And normally it doesn't bubble up quite that bad. And today I have another doctor's appointment. I um, also have another doctor's appointment tomorrow that I made yesterday because um, I need to see a neurologist. This is a new neurologist, which is, he's in, so this neurologist is in Edmond, uh, which is about an hour away from me. So tomorrow will be interesting. I'm debating on whether or not I should change it. Although um, my husband said that we're going to get another snowstorm uh, next week. So it's kind of like, well, what do I actually you know, want to do? Because I am like really physically exhausted. So anyway, uh, enough jibber jabbering. Uh, Cause I don't want to make this too long. So all right. So I am happy with where the resin pieces are, and like I said, I think I'm okay with having a little bit of overspill on the snowflakes. Um, and just kind of just because this is an experiment, I'm just seeing how things are going to work, and I'm not expecting necessarily perfection. I'm not, it's not like I'm going to be giving this to anybody or selling this to anybody. Um, although, you know, if, if you want it, I'm happy to send it to you. Um, if I'm happy with the way it has come out, that's the only way I would ever send it to anybody. If I'm not happy with the way it has been sent out, I will not send it to anybody. So after I pour this and it has cured, um, I will make another video to show you what it looks like unmolded along with, you know, how the the dragon and the snowflakes turned out um, in comparison to the way I've used the mold. So you guys can see like the, the end result. So, okay. Um, I am... pouring this and I'm scraping the sides and the bottom and I will move the cup here in just a second because things are kind of floating away and I want to just make sure I get everything out first before I fix it because there's no sense in me trying to fix it as I'm trying to get the resin out because I'll have to do it do more anyway so just give me one minute while I get the resin out and more than likely uh, throughout the day um, I will come in and check on this piece to make sure things hasn't haven't like completely floored off the uh, off the edge of the earth of this piece, um, and it may, and that's fine. Like I said, this is just an experiment. All right, so I'm good with that. So now I'm gonna take my popsicle stick, and we are going to move things around a little to kind of get it back to where it was. Also to make sure that uh, the snowflakes and the dragon are not sticking out of the clear resin.
there, there. And I may have to get some sort of stand or tray or something because my table is not level. I can see that right now. And I know of a mold maker that actually makes a tray that you can set your resin pieces on. that keeps the, your molds level. It's not cheap, I know that. So I may have to like save up a bit of cash for it. Cause he designed it himself. It's, I've seen other resin makers use like, um, like old or cheap uh, cutting boards. Um, but I think I need more than that. So. I need to, this is the thing. This is like my beastie thrust that I have a problem with with resin is I also like to fiddle. Okay, so um, the bubbles are already starting to come up uh, to the top. And I'll just show you a quick little trick uh, on how I get rid of bubbles. So I'm going to pause really quick um, and I will be right back. Okay, so uh, just one last thing. Uh, so if you can see this here i took my gloves off uh just because i'm not gonna be touching anything um so if you see this right here those are all bubbles um and so how i so like some people use like those like mini uh blowtorch things you can buy them like from any store like walmart or whatever i think they even sell them you know on amazon it's like those blow torches you would like make uh creme brulee with uh, some people do that. I'm always afraid I'm going to burn or melt my molds. So, um, I've found this trick is, uh, I found it actually, um, on YouTube, uh, and they said a cheap, easy way to get rid of bubbles is by using a drinking straw. And all you have to do is keep a little back, a bit back and obviously don't breathe in. Do not, because um, you don't want to, you know, breathe in any of the fumes or anything like that. But just um, take a deep breath in away from the resin and um, blow into the straw and uh, over uh, the bubbles and the bubbles should disappear. So hopefully this works and you can see it. So I don't know if you were able to see that, but um, the bubbles have sort of kind of dissipated. Um, and I'm pretty happy about where, what I see um, because uh, this particular resin um, 
the bubbles will usually work itself out. Uh, it did with uh, the black resin because I didn't see any as the item, uh, as the pieces were curing. So I'm going to leave it as it is right now. I'm not going to mess around with it anymore. I'm going to check on it in a little bit before I leave for my doctor's appointment uh, and see and check to see if I need to get rid of any more bubbles and to make sure that nothing else has floated off the reservation <laughs> and I don't need to move things back. And I'll just use, do that by, um, you know, taking another popsicle stick and shifting things back around. So, um, Again, uh, thanks for uh, checking this video out. I really appreciate it if you've gotten this far. Again, I appreciate it if you give me a subscribe, thumbs up, hit the notification button when I post my next video, and um, leave a comment below about what you think. Um, and yeah, until next time, I will talk to you guys later. Bye.